hey 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 you guys welcome back to my channel this is the infinity midwife so today um i'm going to be also sharing um i don't know if you've seen part two which speaks about my dad's um history i will be sharing a bit about my, about a, about my mom's now why am i sharing all these stories with you guys it's really because i feel like I went through a lot in my life, and mind you, I'm 36 years old. I'm a mother of three boys. But I feel like my message could be so liberating for people out there. So I'm gonna share this with you. Um, in this video, I will be particularly speaking about my mom's history and how she uh, carried heavy, heavy feelings of unworthiness that has been passed down to her from a whole line of women and that has also been passed down to me okay now why are we looking at this feeling of unworthiness now i just want to clarify this because i feel like the feeling of unworthiness is ultimately one of the biggest psychological or one of the biggest mental um um um, um biggest mental breakdown that we can have when we are feeding and when we are being fed this feeling of unworthiness because when we feel unworthy we don't feel like anything matters right we can be in the deepest of pain the deepest of hurt but because we believe we have this belief that we are worthy of nothing good we will continue to carry on the pain carry on the burdens carry on this unhappiness carry on the 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 the, the, the toxicity carry on the codependency carry on with all these pains that are unnecessary but because we have that that deep ingrained feeling of unworthiness therefore we need to accept everything we need to uh, we need to reject our worth and carry on with unworthiness so without further ado i don't know if it makes sense to you guys but i will be talking about my mom's story so my mom comes from a long line of women that have kept the tradition of a female mutilation now from the part of the world that we come from this is really big in the area this is really big in villages in surrounding or foreign or surrounding countries and this is a practice that has been widely abolished but again it is something that is still widely practiced under the covers right it's undercover nobody knows it happens but the majority of the population knows it still it, it exists right and it also depends on the type of tribe that you are part of or you belong to so my mom being um being part of that tribe or that long line of of of, in, of inheritance she 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 survived that right so at a young age i'm just going to put you a bit of a bit in context here because i think that it is it is needed okay um one thing that one thing that comes with that that heavy trauma uh, through this mutilation is that first of all you are still a very young little girl you're probably like two three years old four five and you are being sent to um some aunties your grandmother it's usually during the summertime right when school is out or when you go back on vacation to see your parents or your your, your family so you're being taken back to the village and that's where it happens so you you think you're going back to be greeted by your family by your aunties by your grandmother and and then when they come and pick you they come and get you in a way that is that is very um is very rapid because it happens really quickly and and there's women that's gonna come and take you with strength with force and they're going to hold you down all of them are going to are going to hold down a part of your body so you're going to be really in this position of powerlessness and that is absolutely important that we get that here so that feeling of powerlessness and betrayal is going to seep so deep within your subconscious mind within your dna within your genes that after after the, 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 the act of mutilation is done, 
the little girl is just by herself crying all alone not only she feel she is feeling abandoned she is absolutely feeling betrayed she is feeling injustice she is feeling rejected she is feeling all types of feeling humiliation how is it that this happened to me is what is the screams that i'm hearing so when when these little girls grow up a part of their identity is completely lost they are completely they are struggling to find themselves because because part of themselves were taken away from them at a very very early age and so this is what my mom went through and so this is some of my cousins went through and some this is some my, my grandma my auntie a lot of women went through this and i was supposed to go through this but i didn't somehow some way um my ancestors or some spirit guys were holding the fort for me and my sister not to get cut and we did not because we got this fever we got these mosquitoes bites and so we were sick for the the longest time during that trip but my mom did even admit to me that there was a point in time that we were supposed to go and get you know get initiated so that was just a, a little story of you know how this how this tradition is being passed on till this day it is not something that is totally abolished it is something that is well aware of uh, throughout the population so in the village it still happens you can find people that will do it for your daughter because again it's a tradition it's it's rampant in the tradition some people look at it as a way of being uh, purified a way of cleansing the, the the woman's body a way of keeping the woman in bondage right because pleasure is not yours pleasure is meant to be for your husband so that being said my mom grew up with that attached to her at a very young age so nonetheless she uh grew up in a very um very violent home where her dad was uh, part of the military so there was a lot of strict it was a lot of, of, of beatings in the family as discipline and she also married at a very young age around the age of 15 my mom got married and was pregnant with her first son so do you imagine the level of trauma she was carrying the feeling of unworthiness that was seeped deep within her so at 15 years old, she gets to marry an older man of like maybe 40 years old. So that's another topic that I will be discussing in, in the next series, which is um, which is exposing the, the various traditions, especially in the African culture, traditions that no longer serves us as communities, as individuals, as humans. We need to get rid of those uh, traditions. So nonetheless, right at 15 years old she's already experienced forced marriage she's already experienced uh, female mutilation she already experienced childbirth and so you know she still has ambitions because she is still she still wants to succeed in life and her her definition of success is 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 built a certain way she views it a certain way and when she, she comes in onto this foreign land she meets my dad right and so the women in her family have had already issues regarding abandonment, issues, issues regarding uh, betrayals and justice. I mean, you got to understand this, okay? When a woman gets cut, okay, a part of, a part of her dies. She no longer belongs to herself. She no longer feels sovereign over her body, let alone her identity, her mind, her spirituality. She does not belong to herself no more because it has been taken from her somehow, some way. Okay? And it's the most pleasurable part of a woman that we are talking about. So something that is so, so pure, so innocent, because in essence, we are created in 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 the creator's image so we are we are perfectly created we are perfectly created and so when that that happens to a little girl or to a little boy at that there are some deeply seated wounds 
that are heavy, heavy, subconsciously heavy on a person's mind. So those type of generations, those type of women that grow up like that, there are deep, deep seated feelings of unworthiness and insecurity. Deep, deep, deep distrust, mistrust. So the type of energies that these women are going to attract, these women are going to be so insecure, feeling, feeling that they have to do so much to get ahead of themselves because they feel like so much has been taken from them. So they're going to find, they're going to find ways to be materially secured. If it's not through a marriage, they're going to want to please a certain authority because again, they are not, they, they have lost that sense of belonging. So what does that do when you grow up? If your parents haven't chosen for you a, a suitable man or suitable husband that's going to benefit the family financially, economically, what do you do? You start to see, you start to create ways of, of getting those insecurities met. Whether it happens through prostitution, whether it happens through forced marriage, whether it happens through, um, through, um, um, through business, business entrepreneurship, however it translates. Those women are, are carrying heavy, heavy, heavy trauma that are usually never resolved in their lifetimes because there is no space to be spoken about. There is nothing to be talked about. It's just what happens. And it's, at the end of the day, it's accepted. And most of the time, these women are going to reproduce, are going to have more daughters, and they're going to apply that same tradition. They're going to pass it on over to their daughters, right? So my mom, after her first marriage failed, she decides to move overseas. And she meets my dad, right? Was she maybe in love with him? I don't know. But I, I find it I find it very questionable if there can be um, a purity of love when these type of situations happen. Because at the end of the day, these mutilation that happens on little girls and little boys, at the end of the day, I find it to be genocide. I find it to to extinguish all type of love you could be have all all, all type of love you you could feel within your heart. I think. I think that purity or that innocence is taken away. You become bitter. You become bitter. You become something else. You become you, you become manipulated in all types of ways because that little part of you is gone. That innocence of yours, that love that you had so much for the people around you, that love that you had for yourself, that spark, that innocence is gone at a very young age. It's just like sexual trauma. It equates. And it's even deeper. Because sexual trauma, at least, you know, you can still, after the healing, after you've gone through healing, you, you, you can still find pleasure with your body. But women that have been mutilated, how do you get your pleasure back? How do you connect with that part of yourself that is innocent? And that is truly joyful. How? So my mom meets my dad. And she's dealing with her own insecurities, her own wounds, right? And and they had four children in, in, about a, in a space of seven years. And it didn't work out. What happened? I don't know. What hurt did she encounter when she was with my dad? I don't know. Was she ever really committed to the relationship? How would we know? How could one tell that she was really committed? We don't know. You see, when there are underlying traumas, especially female mutilation, I'm gonna do a, a whole video on this because I feel like, yes, it ties into my, my story, but I feel like, yes, it ties also into my mom's story, but I feel like it needs, I need, I need to go deep within this. Um, this um, this um, tradition, this tradition that kills generations of women, that genocides women, children, men. So, all this to say, 
what triggered my mom to ghost my dad right was she ever really just happy or was she trying to to feed uh, an insecurity was she trying to 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 satisfy her insecurity her own needs of of of, of success her own definition of success her own ambitions and her own um her own expression of 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 of, of um of, of being successful having a, a successful relationship having a family did she even know how to tap into this you know when your happiness has been taken away from you how can you find it in another how can you find it within yourself how can you find it even in your children so her heavy traumas right and i think that for a lot of women denial denial becomes second nature I think that the denial of pain becomes second nature because it's it's not even something that is being talked about. Your female mutilation is something that is so deeply rooted in certain tribes, certain people from my country that it becomes a denial. Like even the pain becomes a denial. You know, because we want to accept that tradition. We want to pass it on. We want to keep furthering that, that tradition, right? We hold on so much onto that tradition that we deny ourselves our own truth. We deny the pain that has been caused through those generations of women, through those little girls, to those little girls. We deny that pain. We deny that injustice. We deny the betrayal. We deny the rejection, the, the feeling of abandonment. We deny the feeling of unworthiness to those girls that become little women, that become little mothers. And they are gonna deny the pain that they will cause around them. They will deny the betrayal that, will, that they will cause and that they will, they will cause around them. And that's, that's the type of trauma that I was carrying. I'm sorry, guys. I'm getting emotional because this is real. It's no jokes is what I'm saying. <laughs> and here I am laughing. So this is my mom's story. And the previous part was my dad's story. Now I want you guys to go home and figure out what type of trauma or heavy pain that your mom or a long line of mothers of care of four mothers that ca that was carried through your dna what is it what is it is it a tradition is it a belief is it a is it something is it something in the culture is it a way women have to carry themselves what is it i want to know think about it write it down reflect upon it and I'll see you in the next video. Guys, this one is long. I'm sorry I said I was going to keep it under 10 minutes or 15 minutes. Here we are, 18 minutes. But no longer delays. Have a good evening.